we are going to be focusing on brushes for this video. There's a lot to talk about, so I'm probably going to make two videos about it. This video is just going to center around the brushes that come when you download Fire Alpaca. And my next video will be about customizable brushes. So if you only want to learn about customizable brushes, you should probably just wait until the next video. So I'm going to pull out the brush window. That's all I have. I don't have a lot right now. Before we get into brushes, I do want to point out really quick that up here uh, you'll see a correction tab. Stop. If you notice that your strokes are being a bit wonky, such as this, see how it's not very smooth, then you probably just need to work on the correction setting. Mine keeps hiding. I have mine at 16. Uh, it doesn't look much smoother but that's only because I'm recording my screen and when I record screens my art ends up looking not super smooth. What is that? But that's at 19. The highest is 19 which means it'll be the smoothest so if you have kind of shaky hands and you need your line art to be smooth, just work on the correction. So first off, the default brushes are, I'm not sure, because I've deleted so many default brushes that I can't really remember which ones come with Fire Alpaca when you first download it. I'm pretty sure pen does, and that's pretty much the most basic brush. And then pencil does too, if you haven't use it, it's like that. To work with the settings of the brushes, you can just double click it and the edit brush tool will come out. You can edit like all of this great stuff. Opacity by pressure, size by pressure, so if your pressure sensitivity isn't working, make sure to check these and if this is already clicked, there's probably something wrong with your tablet. Good luck to you because I have no advice for that. Fire Alpaca updates quite often and during just about Almost every update, they add in more default brushes. One of the most recent updates added the polka dot brush, which is probably my new favorite, as you can see. Oh, that's so beautiful. Make sure to play around with the settings. Oh, that's right. Um, there's a brush control window up here. And if you don't have that right now, it should be there when you first download Fire Alpaca. But if it's not, just go up to window and there's brush control right here. And there's also brush preview, which usually comes as a default, but I usually remove it because I don't much care for it. But it shows you how your brush is going to turn out. You probably noticed that I'm using red because that's just my go-to color. Can you? You're making me look bad. Up here is the color bar. Usually when you first download Fire Alpaca, it comes as a wheel, such as so. But I, I don't know, it's too small. I could, you can always make it, no. Just kidding, you can't make it bigger. So I go for the color bar. If you want the color bar, just go up to the color tab and choose color bar. Anyways, so up here are the two colors that your brush is set on. So let's say if you're going to color in somebody's hair, so that's going to be like the base color and you want to shade the hair and you want to keep that shading color in hand, you just click on it and it switches to the other color and then you choose the darker color. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it's handy if you want to switch between the colors easily and not have to go picking it out all the time. Something that's super handy is the transparent brush, which is right over here next to it. So let's say you're working with a very specific type of brush. Let's go with this one is the best one as an example. So I'm coloring this thing and let's say I made some kind of mistake and I need to erase it. If I use the normal eraser tool, it's an obvious difference. See, it's nice and smooth and I don't want people to know I erased there. So instead of using the eraser tool, you're gonna stay onto the brush setting but you're gonna click the transparent brush and it works like the eraser tool except that it keeps the texture of the brush. So if I erase, it's the same texture right there. Another eraser tool that actually isn't the eraser is the fade eraser, which is a brush that I'm pretty sure is a default, but if it's not, then I don't know. I have it right here. If I double click it, these are the options. Yeah. So you can make it if it's not a default. You just have to put eraser as the type. You can title it fade eraser and 
soft edge. I'm pretty sure that's what's needed. This is what it ends up looking like. Um, this is a good eraser tool for when you're using the airbrush tool. So it's pretty much just like that. And if I wanted to erase it without making the edges very sharp, then you just use a face eraser. And it looks way better than using just a normal eraser, which is like that. So we're gonna talk about the buttons on the bottom of the brush window right here. The first button is the edit brush button, which um, has kind of a weird name because it doesn't necessarily mean that you're editing the brush that you're selected on. It's more like the new brush tool, which is you get to make your own brush. There's a lot of types you can work with, um, a lot of options. Different brushes have different options. So let's see, this one, like the watercolor has these options right here, the mix of coloring and load colors. We have edge brush, doesn't have a lot. The blur has the blur intensity. So you can just play around with these whenever you have time. The next brush, these two brushes we're not gonna talk about because this has to do with making customizable brushes or whatnot. And I'm gonna talk about those in my next video because they take up way too much time. There's the folder button, so just like layers, you can have folders of brushes, like if you have way too many brushes. Uh, I don't have a lot, but if I did, I could just create a folder. Here it's called a brush group, and I can say line art. So if I had a lot of brushes that I use for line art, and then you just drag onto it just like you would if it was layers, and you can close it, open it, all that good sort of folder stuff. Can I undo that? No. Okay, I guess I'm stuck with that until I figure out how to get rid of that. There's the duplicate brush tool, which is the same as the layers. You just select the brush that you want to duplicate and you click that and it will show up at the bottom. And you can use this if you wanted to play around with the settings of the, of the original brush. And to delete this brush or to delete any brush, there is the trash can right here. There we go. Oh, hey. I just figured out how to delete brush groups. <laughs> I thought I was stuck with it forever. All you gotta do is drag the brush outside of the group, like so, and then just right click on the brush group and then click delete group. Yay! So there you go in case you got stuck with one as I did. Go back in. Just do it. Go. I messed up. Alright, that is all I had for the brush video at least the first part. I am finished here. Hopefully this was helpful to at least one single person. You can comment and like on this video. <laughs> like on this video. <laughs> you can like this video if you want. It would mean a lot and commenting always makes me happy. If you have any suggestions for videos or uh, questions just let me know and I'll try to make a video about it. I'm trying to make a video at least once a week but as time goes on, I'm slowly losing ideas for videos because I've talked about a lot of things already. So yeah, I would really appreciate some suggestions on videos. Okay, thank you for watching. Bye!